Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. I'm filming this at night, so the lighting is different, but don't pay much attention to that. What is your favorite part about nerfing? Is it the performance of a blaster? Is it the combination of the ability to modify a blaster to make it shoot however you want, customize your ergonomics, and introduce fun gimmicks? Is it just the fun gimmicks themselves? Well, what's a fun gimmick that you wish you could bring back to life? The hail fire's big rotating cylinder? Maybe. The shell-fed shotgun action of the sledge fire? Definitely, I wouldn't mind that at all. What about a built-in camera? A built-in camera? I mean, maybe the Terror Scout, but what other blaster had a built-in camera? Uh, you've been looking at it this whole time. It, it, this thing. This right here. This is the Elite Cam ECS-12. You guys probably don't even know what it is or haven't heard that name in a very long time. And yet when you look at this blaster, it looks so cool. What happened to it? I don't know, let's find out. So the Cam ECS-12, a blaster that came out in one of the earliest generations of N-Strike Elite. I count this as a first-gen Elite blaster. It released back in 2014 and pretty much immediately fell into obscurity right after it was released. Which is very confusing because this was Nerf's highest tier flagship blaster. Oh no. Wait a minute. That means nothing, apparently. I think one of the biggest contributing factors right out of the gate for this blaster's failure was the fact that in America it costed $80, and in Australia it costed 120 That's a lot of dollars! That's a lot of dollars for a nugget! And the thing, the truthfully, this blaster is genius. It just sucks that it was executed wrong, but I'll get into all that later. Let's first start out with the design. So first, a really quick note. I would like to point out that the word Nerf is actually in the blaster's name. It is officially called the Nerf Cam ECS-12, which makes this the first and only blaster to actually have Nerf in the title. So technically speaking, that makes this blaster's full name the Nerf N-Strike Elite Nerf Cam ECS-12. Good heavens. That's a couple more words than I'm used to saying. But onto the blaster's actual design, it looks good! And it looks good from both sides. Both sides are very different. This side has this speaker grill thing in here, which I'll explain what that does in a little bit, and the other side has the jam door. Both sides have the Nerf logo engraved into the plastic, which is actually a really cool idea. But this blaster seemed to be one of the first to start this unholy trend of not painting both sides. Wait, the hail fire came out just two years earlier than this. This was one of the first ones that didn't paint both sides. This was one of the first ones. Let's get on to the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, a foregrip, and a stock, all built in, not removable, no end strike barrel lugs or stock attachment points, but honestly that kind of works in this blaster's favor and I'll explain why in a moment. The main grip, Oh man, it feels really good. It's kind of a blend between the original Elite style and a sort of advancement forwards from that. It looks like the original Elite style, but it's a little bit more optimized to fit anybody's hand size, and it feels really good. As for the stock, it's a little bit short, but since this is a strife reskin and not a rapid strike reskin, it's honestly not that big of a deal, and the stock feels very comfortable to brace against your shoulder. Same with the cheek rest, even though your vision is kind of obstructed by this thing, which I will explain in a moment. And as for the foregrip, yeah, it is just as comfy as it looks. It feels wonderful. The ergo of this thing mixed with the shell is just reason enough for me to buy it already. Even though, oh man, we'll, we'll get into all the issues this thing has later. But first, we have to talk about what on earth is this on the top? What is this thing that is blocking your view? It's a camera. And that is an SD card slot right up there. So you can take your SD card and shove it into the blaster itself. And when you push this button right here... Ugh, the future! Everything goes bleep bloop when you turn it on, but the blaster comes to life and actually turns on. And look, it's a real life camera. Like, it's an actual camera. Where's the camera lens? Right there, that little pinhole right up at the front. And here's the thing that's so cool about this. To start and stop filming, 
there's a button on the foregrip, making perfect use of the blaster's built-in ergonomics to be able to start and stop recording. But don't get your hopes up quite yet, this is Hasbro you're talking about. Intern, can you come and film for me for a second? Alright, so like this one time I decided I wanted to start making my own videos. Except I kind of lost my Battle Scout camera and I don't know where it is. So I decided I wanted to go and look in storage because I mean maybe there's something in storage that I could use. And I actually went all the way to the back corner into this room marked do not touch it. So I, I decided to touch it because I'm the CEO of Hasbro. Of course I can touch it now. But I looked and there was actually a KM ECS-12 in there and I decided to turn it on because I mean it's brand new. I might as well see if it works. And it actually works. Oh my goodness. Let me, let me actually turn this around. Now it looks like I'm about to do something unspeakable, but I decided to open it and start filming with it, and I think this is actually going to work. I think it can actually start my content creation business empire off of this, and this is perfect. Oh my goodness, is that a dark zone blaster? I'm going to jail! Once you've finished yelling into your camera, you can press this button right here, and look, there's the video you just took. Enjoy the audio from the Cam ECF 12s built-in speaker and audio quality. That sounds great, doesn't it? I am not going to make you listen to that entire recording, but yeah, the speaker in this nugget is less than ideal. And when you're on the video playback screen, to get back to the main menu where you can film, you can just press the record button on the grip again and it'll take you back, but it won't start filming yet. And one thing I would like to note is this blaster's functionality as having an electronic scope. That sounds really cool, except for one tiny teeny tiny issue. If you leave the blaster idle for more than 30 seconds, it will start a countdown and after 10 seconds it will turn off unless you press any of the three buttons on here. And that's it. It turns itself off. It's good for power saving, but it does make it so you have to press that button every 25 or so seconds to make sure that it doesn't do that if you wanted to use this as an electronic scope. Still though, that's pretty cool. And if you're wondering what this thing on the top is, well, it's, 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 a, it's a sun shield. So in case you're using it outside and you don't want the sun in it, you can put that there, but you can actually just take it right off if you don't want it on, which makes it look a little bit sleeker for indoor use, but I actually think that it looks just fine with the sun shield on, so I just leave it on anyways, even if I don't use it. It actually looks pretty cool. It gives the blaster a little bit more charm. And in case anybody's wondering about the camera quality, 480p, 20 frames per second. We're talking top of the line here for 2014, $80 for this thing. I just want to remind y'all. But let's actually go back to the blaster part of the blaster and take a look at the triggers. It's got all three. It's got a rev trigger, a main trigger, and a mag release. I'm going to put a magazine in so that you can actually take a look at what these triggers look like. The rev trigger is very nice. It feels just like the stripes, though it doesn't disappear into the blaster, and it's not as clicky as the stripes rev trigger. I think it could use a little bit more improvement. As for the main trigger, again, feels just just like the Strife, except this one actually seems a little bit smoother than the Strife, and it's got a little bit more punch to it than the Strife's trigger. I'm not sure why, and I can only imagine that that's going to improve because this blaster is a, uh, it's a bit dated, and it needs to be relubricated desperately. And even without the relubrication, I could comfortably say this is one of the nicest main triggers on any semi-auto flywheel blaster I've used. As for the mag release, it is functionally identical to the Strife. You push it in, and the mag comes out. I would also like to note that putting the mag in and taking the mag out is buttery smooth and it practically mag drops right out of the box. And the jam door is this thing right up here. It slides forwards and backwards, which makes it like 50 times better than the Strife's lift up and push down jam door. I love sliding jam doors. It just feels so much more premium. And then obviously being a semi-auto blaster, you rev it and then you fire it. Two things to note here that I absolutely love. One, this blaster is basically dead silent for a semi-auto flywheeler. Not with the microphone, though. We'll get to that in a moment. And two, it's got flywheel brakes. I love having flywheel brakes on blasters, and there are so few blasters that actually have flywheel brakes on them, but having flywheel brakes on your blasters just makes them sound so much more premium and high-end. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's basically when you take your finger off the rev trigger, the flywheels speed to a stop instead of taking their sweet time to slow down like most flywheelers do. This blaster stopped revving about two seconds before this one did. 
And the sad part is there's only two other blasters in my whole collection that I can remember up to this point that have flywheel brakes in them. The Alien Menace Incisor, which is a nugget, and the Mega Macedon, which is also a nugget. Every single other flywheel blaster in my whole collection doesn't have flywheel brakes in it, and that just kind of sucks because I like having flywheel brakes in the blasters. It feels more premium having flywheel brakes in the blasters. But I've stalled long enough, it's time to see where the sadness goes. This blaster is functionally identical to a Strife with about the same performance as the Strife, except for one key difference. If the flywheels are right here, there's almost a foot worth of barrel in the front. Do you know what that means with stock flywheels and stock motors? Oh man. <laughs> I'm aiming it perfectly straight. <laughs> this is freaking unusable. Oh man. This is a record on this channel. I have never seen such inconsistent performance out of a flywheeler, even out of the Mega Moto Strike. And that thing doesn't even have as long as a barrel this thing does. This thing has a long barrel and the inner diameter is the small kind. It's not even the big kind like something like the Scravenger over here. It's a small barrel and it's way too long and so the barrel drag out of this is insane. For 80 United States dollars, you would at least be expecting something that you could rely to shoot vaguely where you're aiming when you pulled the trigger and a dart came flying out of the barrel. But on this one, some darts didn't even make it to the zombie target because they farted out so aggressively. This thing is one of the most condensed nuggets I've ever used in my life. And that's so sad because look at how freaking cool it looks. Outside of the retail price being way too expensive for a Strife reskin, this blaster's biggest and most glaring drawback is its performance. But luckily, this thing's going to be equated with what we do with performance around here. So with that out of the way, what do I think of the Nerf Cam ECS-12? I actually really love this, even though it is such a nugget and the, the performance is nugget tier and the camera is nugget tier. I understand why I failed, but good grief, I love this blaster and it's for all the wrong reasons. It looks so good and is so comfortable in every single regard that there's no way to hate this thing, even though it is such a nugget and it's basically unusable in its stock form. I can't help but just smile every time I pick this thing up and play around with it and turn the camera on and listen to the bleep bloop noise that it makes when you turn it on and then film nugget tier videos and make fun of those nugget tier videos later when I react to them and send them to phase one foam. Oh, phase one foam, I know you're watching this. I'm gonna be sending you a lot of videos recorded off of this idiot and I expect you to react to them on stream. But objectively speaking, I know exactly why this blaster failed. It was $80, has mediocre performance, and has a camera that makes webcams from 2005 look amazing in comparison. If it was for the things that I described a few minutes ago, the idea of the blaster, the style of the blaster, and the ergonomics, this thing would probably still be one of the best rated blasters that Nerf ever made. But it isn't, and people just don't remember it because it was a flop. It was the first nugget in the Elite series besides the Halo fire to some people and perfectly set the expectations for where nerf would go in about eight years oh lord what happened but now here begs the question what should you do if you find one of these things for a reasonable price like 30 to 40 bucks like i found it well 
Honestly, I would say give it a shot. Even though it isn't that good, it is moddable. It is basically just a strife, but there are some electronic components that you have to work around to figure out how to mod it. But if you were to mod it, you could basically make this into something like the Tesseract, and I love the Tesseract, but dude heavens, I would trade the Tesseract for this in a heartbeat if this did the same thing the Tesseract did, because oh my gosh, this is just so comfortable. I just love this shell so much. I could gush about how good the shell is and the cosmetics of this thing are for days, but I'm going to keep this review short and cut it off here. Thanks for watching. Bye.